These are the top five beginner cybersecurity certifications to get you hired. So if you're new to cybersecurity, there are two things I typically recommend all beginners focus on. Number one is to, of course, learn technical skills. You can do this through hands-on labs, different projects. I have a lot of technical courses and cyber ranges that I also share on my channel. But the second thing is, of course, certifications. Certifications are basically the credentials that employers are looking for when you're applying, especially to cybersecurity jobs. Besides cloud, cybersecurity is probably the biggest sector in tech that wants certifications. And oftentimes certifications means higher salary higher chance of getting noticed by a hiring manager or a recruiter, and of course, just general upskilling. So the first cybersecurity certification on this list is the Security Blue Team Level 1 Certification or the BTL1. So if you've done any research into cybersecurity jobs, you've probably already seen that most entry-level cybersecurity jobs are in the Blue Team or Defensive Security. So this means working in an SOC, triaging through logs, looking through different alerts, responding to security incidents. This is typically the most junior role on a cybersecurity team, and that is why a lot of of entry level or beginner early career certifications in cybersecurity are focused specifically on the blue team. This certification is one of the ones that really stand out because let's face it, there's a lot of certifications out there and it takes a while for recruiters and hiring managers to catch up and realize, hey, this is a new certification that a lot of good candidates are getting and we should be asking for this certification on our job listings. But the Blue Team Level 1 certification covers everything from security fundamentals, networking, Active Directory, OSI model, phishing analysis, threat intelligence, digital forensics, security information and event monitoring, incident response, the list goes on. So personally, I would say this is one of the most holistic certifications I've seen for Blue Teams or SOC analysts out there. And this certification is made for someone who has zero to two years of experience. So even if you have some work experience, this certification will still be great on your resume. And if you want a free security blue team certification, they also have the blue team junior analyst pathway certification. And of course, as always, I'll have all these certifications I mentioned in this video linked in my description below. This one is completely entry level and takes about 30 hours to complete and it is completely free. It covers PowerShell, IOCs or indicators of compromise, the Linux command line, Metasploitable, Nessus, Google Dorking, OSINT or open source intelligence, Wireshark, TCP dump, CyberChef, and a whole list of other skills and tools. Personally, I always recommend this as a starting point if you're first starting out. And once you've completed all the courses within the certification pathway, then you'll get your official BTJA certification. The second certification on this list is for all of you ethical hackers and red teamers out there. This is the TCM PJPT certification exam. It's one of the few entry-level red team certifications that are out there. If you have you know, applied to any kind of junior pen tester or ethical hacker role, you probably will have seen that a lot of those jobs will ask for their OSCP or likely another offsec certification, but typically those are very advanced and definitely not beginner friendly. I know they have beginner friendly certs nowadays, but they're definitely not as popular as their big names. But I've seen a lot of people talk about the PJBT. And I know you guys might've also heard of certifications like the CEH or the Pentest Plus. Personally, while these are also, you know, red team certifications, they aren't hands-on or practical compared to the PJBT or certifications like the OSCP, where you have to write a report and share the actual vulnerabilities that you exploited, share your findings in a full pen test report, which is very different from, you know, a multiple choice exam like the Pentest Plus or the CEH certification. And that is another reason why they're typically not going to be as, as solid to employers if you're trying to show off your technical skills. Okay, so what's covered inside the PJPT certification? So I really like the format of the exam, but it's basically you'll have two days to complete the assessment and an additional two days to write your pen test report. And as part of the exam itself, you'll be leveraging your Active Directory exploitation skills to perform lateral and vertical network movements to try to compromise the domain controller. The exam voucher also comes with 12 months access to the training material that the exam is based on. So I would highly recommend it taking that training before going through with the exam, but they also give you one free exam retake. So if you don't pass on the first try, you always have another try. But the main goal of this exam is to actually teach students hands-on how to actually conduct a pen test rather than just answering questions from a textbook or or just answering a multiple choice exam that doesn't really teach you much of the skills that you will actually be using on the job as a junior pen tester. All right, certification number three on this list is going to be one that you hopefully have already heard of, and that is the CompTIA Security Plus. Now, I always add the Security Plus into these certification lists or recommendations for someone who is starting out in cyber because the Security Plus in general is just one of the most, if not the most, well-known cybersecurity early career certification that you can get. And this is because the Security Plus has just been around for a long time and you'll often see hiring managers and recruiters asking for it on job listings a lot more often than the newer cybersecurity certifications, even though the newer certifications technically do a better job of actually you know, proving that you have the skills if you complete their exams and pass. But the Security Plus is 
yes, mostly multiple choice, but it does have some performance-based questions where you actually have to do hands-on work. But for the most part, it is definitely nowhere in comparison to a hands-on certification exam. But but it is still very popular with hiring managers. So in general, what I recommend to beginners is of course get your security plus so you can at least get through the hiring manager where at least there's one certification on your resume that they recognize. And of course, you know, it covers the foundational cybersecurity concepts. So at least they know that you have the basics down. And then number two, getting a technical certification. Any one that I mentioned in this video, I'll be covering a few more after this, but that'll give you a good balance of certifications on your resume. I typically would stop at two or three, to be honest. I, I know there's people with their resume decked out in certifications and personally, I really don't think you need all that unless you really want to and you don't have the funds to, but most of the time certifications are pretty pricey. They're like in the hundreds and also there are renewal fees every year, or every other year, maybe every three years. You know, personally, I wouldn't go overboard with, you know, four or five, six certifications just to continuously pay for it because eventually you're probably not going to need them anymore when you're in your mid-career or your senior career where you're probably going to be going for your CISSP or your CISM or your OSCP. So yeah, no need to get, you know, too many early career cybersecurity certifications right at the beginning. Okay, so for the CompTIA Security Plus, it basically covers a breadth of knowledge, everything from encryption to, to Active Directory to different ports to networking cables. It definitely does cover a lot of different topics within the cybersecurity and touching a bit on the IT space. I will say that it definitely does help you prepare for cybersecurity interviews as well because I could answer almost every question after taking my security plus. Almost every topic, even if I couldn't answer it, I knew something adjacent to that concept because of what I learned from the security plus. So I will say it's very well worth it just for that aspect. But there is also a CompTIA security plus exam objectives guide. I always share this to anyone who is studying for their security plus. I've made many videos on my channel. I'll list them down in my description. If you're looking for tips on how to pass your security plus, or if you're looking for a study guide, I have a lot of those as well. But the main thing is that the security plus is also used to meet the US DOD Department of Defense Directive 8140 and ISO 1724 standards, which is why a lot of employers specifically look for candidates with their security plus to hire because of potential hiring requirements, especially for the DOD. All right, certification number four on this list is the Google Cybersecurity Certification. Now, this one I've talked about a lot on my channel. I've also done full phone reviews of the certification in the past, so I'll link those down in my description as well. Some of Google's best security engineers created the certification to teach the foundational skills needed for an entry-level cybersecurity job. A lot of times people ask whether they should get their security plus or their Google cybersecurity certification. And my answer is it kind of depends. The Google cybersecurity cert is a lot less expensive than the security plus, but the security plus is typically more well-known and more sought after. But the Google cybersecurity cert also has hands-on projects, technical labs, basically teaches you technical skills and, and a chance to gain hands-on experience as part of the course. While the security plus is mostly multiple choice and with you know some performance-based questions. So it really depends on what kind of learning style that you're looking for. For the Google Cybersecurity Cert specifically, it covers cyber attacks, incident response, batch scripting, intrusion detection and prevention, operating systems, computer security, information management, vulnerability management, security hardening, and network security. So overall, I will say that this certification is still relatively SOC or blue team focused compared to Security Plus, which, you know, again, is, is really going to touch on hundreds of cybersecurity concepts, not just in the blue team, but also in the red team. And another thing that's great about the Google cybersecurity cert is the fact that you also get access to job application resources. For example, you'll get free job search support, one-on-one -on -one coaching, mock interviews using an interview practice tool and access to a private job board. Once you complete this certification, you'll also be able to connect with over 100 US employers who consider graduates of the Google cybersecurity certifications for their entry-level roles. So it definitely does help give a leg up, especially if you get the certification just with the job search support. So the next two certifications I want to mention, I'm going to talk about them together because they're really similar. And personally, I hold both of these certification companies at a pretty high regard. So the first one is the Troy Hackme SAO 1 certification. And the second one is the Hack the Box CDSA certification or the Certified Defensive Security Analyst Cert. So Hack the Box came out with the CDSA cert, I believe about two years ago. It is their defensive certification and it teaches you everything on the defensive security side. You basically take it as a training pathway. You go through different challenges and labs. And then at the end of it, you take an exam that is hands-on to get officially certified. Similarly with the Try Hack Me SAT 1 certification or the Security Analyst Level 1 cert, this is basically a full-on SOC analyst simulation. So you're going to be acting as if you're already on the job, working as an SOC analyst, looking at logs, digging 
into security alerts, working with an SIEM or security incident and alerts. So there's a lot that goes into it. There's also a multiple choice portion that is part of the Try Hack Me certification exam. But the overall concepts covered in both of these certifications are very similar since they're blue team focused, but the way that they are constructed are pretty different since the Try Hack Me certification primarily focuses on the exam experience itself. Of course, if you buy the exam, it still comes with the training for it, but for the Hack the Box certification, you're primarily purchasing the training and then taking the exam at the end of it, if that makes sense. The focus for Try Hack Me is on the exam experience itself, while the focus for Hack the Box is on learning everything from the pathway, and then the exam at the end is kind of just like a cherry on top. That's basically how it felt when I was reviewing both of these certifications, which is also why I feel like the Hack the Box CDSA certification is actually a bit more entry level compared to the Try Hack Me one, even though I've heard, you know, people will share the opposite opinion online on Reddit and stuff. So it's up to you. I would definitely do your own research picking between these two certs as they're very similar. And of course, Try Hack Me and Hack the Box are both very well known in the cybersecurity space. Definitely more so well known, of course, for their ethical hacking and red team training. But both of these companies have since pivoted into a lot of blue team focused or defensive security content nowadays. So I will say it is still very much worth checking both of these certifications out. But one big difference is the cost between the certifications. The Try Hack Me certification for just the certification exam is $349. And it comes with a three month subscription to Try Hack Me Premium, which, you know, is basically going to be your training for this exam. But if you already have a premium Try Hack Me subscription, then the exam voucher itself is going to cost you $297. However, the Hack the Box CDSA certification is going to be a bit pricier. It's basically going to be double this price because their exam voucher, it comes with two attempts, but it is $210. But the Hack the Box Academy subscription is $490 per year for the silver annual plan. But if you're a student and use a student email to sign up, then I believe it's about $8 a month if prices haven't changed since I last checked. And the same goes for Try Hack Me. I believe they also have student discounts. Most of these platforms are you know, made for students and early career people. So you'll definitely find a lot of student discounts and stuff when you're applying. So definitely check for student discounts before you set up and you know pay full price. But another way to break into cybersecurity, if you're just starting out, is to first start your career in IT and then pivot into cybersecurity once you have technical experience. This is a very popular way I recommend because typically there are just more entry-level IT jobs compared to entry-level cybersecurity jobs. The course I recommend for this is Josh Matacor's IT course, and I've done interviews with his students. I'll link one down in my description where someone with zero technical IT cybersecurity experience was able to get a job within basically a month of completing this course. So I highly recommend checking that out. IT is one of the biggest areas in tech that over overlap in cybersecurity in terms of skills, in terms of tooling. If you've been trying to break into cybersecurity and haven't had as much luck getting an entry-level job, consider starting out in IT first and then pivoting your way into cyber. I also have a discount code for their IT course, also linked below, and I believe there's also a free intro to IT course that you can take as part of the full certification program. All right, so that is it for this video. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below, if there are any certifications you would add to this list that you would not want on this list. I know certifications in cybersecurity have been honestly changing a lot in the past few years, but I do think that the industry, as we're pivoting to more, you know, hands-on practical certification exams, it's definitely heading towards the right direction. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe as it really does help out the channel. I've definitely been posting less YouTube videos nowadays, but let me know if there are any video topics you would like to see from me specifically, because sometimes it does get a little bit repetitive. Don't forget to also stay connected on Discord, LinkedIn, Instagram, all linked in my description below. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Thank you.